would be a waste of time to save money for a girl who will not even be an heir. My mother-in-law and my husband did not feel bad for the fact that they went on a trip to Hawaii with the money they had withdrawn from our child's school savings account. I had run out of patience and declared, I'm getting a divorce. My relatives were furious when they heard that. We all stormed into my parents-in-law's house, but there, an even more shocking fact was revealed. I am Rachel, a 31-year-old office worker in a dual-income family. We have a family of three, my husband Daniel and our daughter Mia. Daniel and I were high school classmates and married upon graduation from college. Mia was born during our second year of marriage. Mia is now seven years old and in the first grade of elementary school. My in-laws live in a neighboring state. Daniel is their second son, but his brother, the eldest son, lives a few hours away. My mother-in-law said that my brother-in-law who left my parents-in-law's house was a heartless person and doted on Daniel, her second son. Daniel had been neglected because he was the second son, and he had been compared to the eldest son who was superior in every way. So, when the eldest son moved away from the family, his mother changed her attitude. My mother-in-law interferes in our house at every opportunity and she has an ill attitude toward me. She does not seem to think well of the fact that our child is a girl. Rachel? Daniel is the second son, but we plan on having him become the heir of our family. So you need to have a son so that he can take Daniel's place in the future. She would say this to me constantly. She would even say this right in front of Mia. So I told her, please don't say these kind of things in front of Mia. I asked my mother-in-law. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not that Mia isn't cute. But once she gets married, she'll leave the family. This is why we need a son to keep this family alive. I couldn't get anywhere with her. Mia cried as she listened to this conversation. Am I not needed because I'm going to get married one day? Does that mean I have to say goodbye to mommy and daddy when I get married? She would ask me. That's not true. You can still hang out with us even once you're married. You are our little treasure. I told her that and I hugged her tightly. I talked to Daniel about this. My brother has left the house because his wife insisted. As the second son, I have to take care of mom. And she's right. Woman will leave someday. So I have to have a son and raise him to be a strong heir. I couldn't get through to him at all. One day when I was worrying about such things, my mother-in-law called me with a happy look on her face. I bought a new car and it was delivered today. I want to show it to Daniel, so I'll drive over there today to visit him. With that said, my mother-in-law was to come to our house when Daniel came home. Daniel came home before my mother-in-law did. Your mom told me that she bought a new car and it was delivered today, I told him. Oh, it finally arrived. I saw it once at the car shop and it looked really cool. Daniel, you saw the car? Yes, I did. I went with her to see it. It cost quite a bit of money, but I'm glad I got the loan. What? What do you mean? I was the one who bought my mom a car. I had to borrow some money, though. Why? You didn't talk to me about this. Well, you would have been against it if I talked to you about it. Of course I would. We need to start saving for Mia's future. Just as we were about to argue, the doorbell rang, announcing the arrival of my mother-in-law. I guess we'll continue this later. I can pay for it within my allowance, and it won't bother the family budget. I want to be filial to my parents too. I apologize for taking out a loan without consulting you, so please, forgive me. I was not convinced, and we ended up talking about this issue. I thought about talking to my father-in-law about it, but when I visited my parents-in-law's house, he was mostly out of the loop. Above all, I didn't have any father-in-law's contact information, and even if I wanted to visit their house, it was impossible to know when my mother-in-law would be gone. Although the pressure from my mother-in-law to give birth to a baby boy did not change, I was spending my days peacefully without any major events. My mother-in-law visited me without notice about twice a month, usually on Daniel's day off. 
After my mother-in-law made a sarcastic remark to me, Daniel and her went out together in the evening and did not return until morning. I wondered what Daniel was doing on his day off, spending all day with my mother-in-law. I was concerned, but I was working from home on my days off to compensate for Daniel's extravagance, and I thought he was taking his mother out of the house, who was toxic to Mia as well. I let this go, thinking this was for the best. I couldn't even take a proper vacation, and I felt bad for Mia. I worked hard every day to try to make ends meet. However, just before Mia started elementary school, something shocking happened. It was one day at the end of the year, one week before New Year's Eve. Daniel announced that he and my mother-in-law were going on a trip to Hawaii. The timing of this announcement was such that we could not even cancel the trip with a departure date just three days away. I was so surprised that I raised my voice and questioned Daniel about it. What are you thinking? You didn't even talk to me about it, and on top of that, going on a trip with just your mother? Well, mom's health has been getting a little worse lately, and this may be the last time we travel overseas. Mom really wants to go to Hawaii for New Year's Eve. Why doesn't your mother and father just go themselves? Didn't you at least think of taking me and Mia with you? No, because with my allowance, I can only afford tickets for me and my mom. Daniel's slurred answer left me with no energy to speak. We didn't speak for the rest of the day, and the next day, I told him. I'm spending the New Year's holiday at my parents' house, so you go enjoy Hawaii. I took Mia back to my parents' house. However, I was not convinced that Daniel's allowance would be enough to cover the travel expenses for the two of them. So, I decided to take various documents related to the family finances back to my parents' house and examine them. I checked the bank statements, the mortgage of the house, and my own premarital bank account, but there was nothing suspicious at all. However, there was no evidence of money being withdrawn from Daniel's account either. I thought it was unlikely but I checked Mia's school savings account. My worst fears were correct. Daniel had canceled Mia's tuition deposit. My outrage was so severe that I decided to divorce Daniel on the spot. I explained the situation to my uncle, who is a lawyer, and has just come to my parents' house for New Year's holidays. I asked him for advice about divorce. I'm sorry, uncle. I didn't want to bring it up at a time like this. What's wrong? Did something happen? Is your husband not with you? About that, he's currently on a trip to Hawaii with his mother. He said they wanted to spend the New Year's in Hawaii together. What about you and Mia? We were left behind. He said he could only afford two tickets. What the hell? He left behind you two and went on vacation with just his mother? <laughs> yes. And on top of that, the money for the trip came out of Mia's tuition fees. I don't want to be negative, but Rachel, you should divorce a man like that. Yes, I think so too. But I don't know the law. I was wondering if you could help me. Of course. Leave it to me. But I'm not a divorce lawyer, so I'll ask my wife to help me. My uncle and his wife are both lawyers, and my uncle's area of expertise seems to be business management. I asked my aunt, who is a lawyer with a strong background in divorce matters, to help me. I heard from my husband. Leave it to me. Let's punish him thoroughly. She became a very reliable ally. I proceeded with the story in more detail. I told her about my mother-in-law's car, which she had bought with Daniel's loan. We decided that we should do some research on our family's financial situation. Now, my other uncle, who is an accountant, joined in. Anyway, the three of them were more determined than I was to punish Daniel and my mother-in-law. I apologized repeatedly, saying, I'm sorry I put you through all this on New Year's. What are you talking about? You know what happens when you make enemies of a family like ours at a time like this. I'm going to make sure they pay. My aunt laughed and patted me on the back. Yes, that's right. There are many lawyers, accountants, and judicial scriveners in my family. After New Year's, we waited for Daniel and my mother-in-law to return back home. After the New Year's holiday, all the relatives decided to storm into my parents-in-law's house and confront them with the divorce papers. 
On the day of the operation, Daniel and his mother-in-law had already returned back home. We found out that Daniel and his mother-in-law had already returned back home and were spending time at my parents-in-law's house as I had expected. I called Daniel and headed to my parents-in-law's house. My parents, my lawyer, and my accountant, plus my brother, who does martial arts as a hobby, were there just in case something happened to us. This large group of eight people went to my parents-in-law's house. Happy New Year! I came here today to discuss my divorce from you, Daniel. I'm here to discuss it with your parents as well. What a way to start the year. I told you, I'm sorry for being selfish. That's about the trip you took with your mother, isn't it? And Daniel, where did you get the money from for your travel expenses? What? From my allowance. <laughs> You're lying. You cancelled Mia's tuition fees without permission, didn't you? You went there with that money, didn't you? <gasps> How do you... Don't just show up here with all these people and say whatever you want. My son doesn't need a wife like you. You're never going to have a baby boy anyways. You took most of Daniel's salary for the girl, and it mostly went towards her tuition, right? So it's none of your business what he does with it. My mother-in-law interrupts me. With all due respect, the salaries of two married people become joint property. It can't belong to only one of them. To my lawyer uncle who defended me, my mother-in-law says, Shut up, you outsider! She yells. Before my aunt could open her mouth to say something in reply, my father-in-law, who had been airing his grievances for so long, spoke up. Enough! I already know everything. I didn't think you would go this far. You're selfishly using the money from your grandchild's future. We're getting a divorce too. Daniel, you will inherit nothing. What? What's wrong with you all of a sudden? Yeah, honey. It's all their fault. No, it's not. They did nothing wrong. In fact, I'm really sorry for all the pain we've caused you. Saying this, my father-in-law apologized to me. Hey, honey! Pull yourself together! You're the one who needs to pull yourself together. I told you. I know everything. Did you have a good time in Hawaii having fun with the younger men with all that money that was meant for our grandchild? Finally, my father-in-law shouted loudly and pulled out a few pictures from his pocket. There was my mother-in-law at the airport, arm in arm with a young man. Next to him was Daniel, holding hands with a woman. Wh what is this? Oh, I don't know anything about this. No! This is all a misunderstanding. Daniel and his mother have been using Mia's tuition money to go on double dates with their lovers. They even went to Hawaii. In fact, at New Year's, my uncle contacted my father-in-law to inform him about my divorce. My father-in-law, upon hearing the news, apologized in tears and told us that he too was divorcing his wife and that he was going to liquidate his property so that he would not give it to Daniel and my mother-in-law. He told me that he wanted the property to go to his eldest son and daughter-in-law and his granddaughter, Mia. When my mother-in-law and Daniel went out together, they didn't come back until morning. They told me that they had gone out together to a bar area and then went to their favorite bars. I told my aunt and uncle about this too. They said they wanted me to take care of the formalities over there too, using various methods. I had them put it all together for me. What misunderstanding? Treating your family like this? You're insane to go on an overseas trip and leave your family alone. I'm divorcing you. And I'm disowning Daniel. W wait a minute. Daniel and my mother-in-law, looking pale and desperate, pleaded with my father-in-law. My aunt, who is a lawyer, and my uncle opened their mouths. Unfortunately, we will not wait for you. We have a claim for alimony related to the divorce and a claim for usury. 
We are the ones who will be taking care of the request against the two of you. The sale of the house in your father's name will be completed next month. We are also proceeding with the property procedures. We have also contacted the eldest son, and we are planning to contact him in the future. He will take care of your father from now on. How could you? Why didn't you say anything? It's because you didn't listen to me. You bullied our eldest son's wife and kicked her out of this house. And now you're causing trouble for our second son's wife and her child. Don't you know anything about shame? I've spoken with my sister-in-law. She also says she doesn't want to have anything to do with you guys. She agreed to this conversation on the condition that we completely distance ourselves from you. Alimony for Daniels of hair, child support for Mia, and refunds for spending money from the family budget. It's going to take a lot of money, and we will make sure you pay it in full. Rachel, listen to me! Listen? You've done so many selfish things without telling me, and now you want to tell me what? You have your mother, and your lover. Anyway, I don't want to see or hear from you ever again. Just stay out of my life. No! What about Mia? A child needs a father. She needs a father, sure. But it's not you. A man who neglects his family and spends all their money. I can't call someone like that a father. I said these words and left my parents-in-law's house. The rest was taken care of by my remaining relatives. When I was about to leave my in-law's house, Daniel chased after me. My brother and cousin seized Daniel when he grabbed my arm and dragged him back into the house. This was the last time I saw Daniel. Later that day, the divorce was finalized, and a little later, I received news that my ex-father-in-law sold his house and rented a small house in the town where my ex-brother-in-law and his wife live. I heard that my ex-brothers-in-law were actually going to take them in their home, but my ex-father-in-law said, I couldn't stop my wife from picking on our daughter-in-law. I couldn't ask you to take me in. I have money for my own retirement, so I will live comfortably on my own and he declined their offer. However, the children at my ex-brother-in-law's place seem to love their grandfather. They always go and play at their grandfather's house after school and then go home. My ex-brother-in-law also seems to be enjoying this because his children could not see their grandfather because of my ex-mother-in-law. And my ex-brother-in-law's wife, my ex-sister-in-law, and I got to know each other through this one incident. We often get together during long vacations to let our children play with each other. The last time I saw Daniel was that day. Mia herself refused to see Daniel. When I was not around, my ex-mother-in-law and Daniel repeatedly said to Mia, If only you were a boy. Mia was traumatized by this. She was afraid that they would say such words to her again. So, she refused to see Daniel. When Mia grows up, she may want to see him again, but until she says that, I won't let Daniel see Mia. My ex-father-in-law sold his house, so Daniel ended up taking care of my ex-mother-in-law. They are living together in the house where our family used to live. However, since we were both working, taking in my ex-mother-in-law who has no job has meant that the family income has gone down while his expenses have gone up. My ex-mother-in-law started working part-time at a local supermarket. Daniel also started working part-time at night. The reason I know this is because a neighbor witnessed this and was a good friend of mine, contacted me to ask what happened. I explained the whole thing to him. I don't know what happened after that, but in that neighborhood, I'm sure they're struggling to survive. Furthermore, it seems that my mother-in-law had fallen in love with a young man and had even borrowed money to pay him off. She is now piled with debt. According to my aunt, they will both go bankrupt before long. I rented a house near my parents' house and live with Mia. My brother and parents love Mia very much and often take her to play with them on holidays. My brother, who is a bachelor, said, I'm not thinking of getting married at all, and I don't want to have children of my own. But I don't know if it's because of that, but Mia is really cute, and I would do anything for her. He takes Mia to his work barbecues and lets Mia play with children her own age. I once asked Mia if she misses her father. Even though I don't see him, I don't miss him at all because I have uncles, grandparents, and grandma. 
she said. Of course, I think she is being nice to me even though she is a child. When I saw Mia and my brothers coming home exhausted on holidays, I was reassured that Mia will not be unhappy because of her father's absence. And recently, my brother has been asking me if there is anyone good enough for me. I asked him about it and it seems that he wanted to introduce me to a single guy who works with my brother. He seemed to take an interest in Mia at a barbecue. My brother told me, He's a really nice guy, but he can't have kids of his own. That's why he can't get married, and he can't even be in a relationship. He liked you a lot. I can vouch for his character, and I'll take responsibility if anything happens to you. We are planning to go out for dinner next time. I still don't have the courage to take a new step forward in terms of marriage and love, but I would like to move forward with Mia in a happy new life with the support of those around me.